How do you warm up for a drawing and painting session so your first marks of the day don't ruin a masterpiece that you've been working on for weeks? In this video, I review how I prepare to draw and paint. The objective is the same as a warm up for sport. It's to prime the body and mind ready for the activities ahead. The exercises I use are based on lessons from Drawerbox and Proco. There are links to them in the description. It's worth watching the original videos because I twist them slightly to meet the needs of my warm up and my execution is far from perfect. My first warm up is based on the superimposed lines and ghosted lines exercises from lesson one of Drawerbox. My first page looks pretty much like this homework. I keep in mind the need to avoid wobbling and fraying at both ends. Ghosting is the practice of rehearsing the line before you draw it. I ghost the lines all the way through the warm up. As well as being mindful of wobbling and fraying, I am also on the lookout for arcing lines. The second exercise is based on the ellipses in Plane's homework. As I do the exercises, I am also mindful of the advice from Proco's Six Habits for Good Line Quality. When I edited this video, I realised I am not following the recommendations particularly well and this is something I will work on. This is my painting room. It's never conventionally tidy, but it's worse than normal because we are storing stuff in here while we are decorating. This useful bench was left by the previous owners. The riser was made by my friend George so I can draw more comfortably standing up. These are the materials I use. A 0.5mm fine liner. This is a Windsor & Newton pen, but any 0.5mm fine liner will do. This is a Coran de Arche clutch pencil with a 3mm 6B lead, but any relatively soft pencil will do. And this is a skewer that I use for measuring, but anything with a point will do. And scrap print paper. I start by marking two points on the paper and then remember to flex my shoulder to engage my whole arm so I'm not just moving from the wrist. I ghost the line a few times before drawing 10 lines. After I've drawn them, I evaluate how well I've done. I check the lines are not wobbly and they are not fraying at both ends. Some fraying at the far end is inevitable but the start should be tidier. If it isn't, it suggests I'm not concentrating on positioning the pen on the starting point. If any of these mistakes are present, I notice them without beating myself up. I remind myself this is a warm up. The intention is to get the mistakes out of my system. I'm usually drawing after a day at work, so I cut myself some slack then it is the medium lines. I make target points for the start and the end, ghost it a few times, and then draw 10 lines. The picture in picture video shows I'm drawing this from the elbow rather than the shoulder. This gives me something to work on. Not drawing from the wrist is a good start, but ideally I want to engage the whole arm. I evaluate the line quality before moving on to the long lines. Ghost it a few times until I think I am being sufficiently accurate, then draw 10 lines. This is a lot more challenging than the medium line. There was a bit of arcing on this one.
I take a moment to evaluate the line quality and then move on to the arcs. I mark the beginning and the end of the arc and ghost it a few times. It is easy to slip into a trance when you are ghosting, so I try to stay alert for mindless ghosting. I find it difficult to get into a consistent movement on the arc. One of Proko's tips for good line quality is not to pause between ghosting and drawing the first line. I notice that I am pausing on all the exercises and I don't follow through on the lines. I'm going to work on both of these points. The next exercise is a variation of the ellipses in planes exercise. I draw circles in squares which gives me the extra challenge of trying to draw a perfect square. I mark the top two corners of the square and check they are horizontally aligned. I estimate where the bottom left corner would be, initially by ghosting an arc from the top right corner, and then by imagining a 45 degree diagonal line. I take a moment to consider if either point is right, and then check by measuring with the cocktail stick. I then estimate where the bottom right corner should be. Now it's back to line drawing, following the same process of ghosting before drawing the line. I find the diagonals more difficult. I missed the end point by quite a way on this one. Since completing this video, I found I am more accurate when I take Proko's advice to follow through on the line. Then there is the circle, which is another challenge. Draw a box advocates only going round it twice, but I do it until the movement feels smooth. I then repeat the first exercise using a pencil in an overhand grip. I won't bore you with all the footage. The overhand grip makes it more difficult to hit the starting point so accurately and my focus for this exercise is different. I am trying to make sure my arm is moving fluidly and consistently.
The last two exercises are really quick. I try and draw a good line between two points. This has still got a lot of room for improvement. And I finish off with some curly lines. That's my warm up. It helps me to loosen up and to get into a more focused mindset, ready to draw and paint. It's also helping my line quality. This is my first attempt at the draw a box superimposed lines exercise. It's not very good. This is a recent page of the first exercise in my warm up. There is a marked improvement. I'm looking forward to making changes to my technique based on what I've learned editing this video. This should lead to further improvements. Thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment if there's anything I can do to make this content more useful.